This is the story of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Perhaps the most remarkable, certainly the most successful book ever to come out of the great publishing corporations of Ursa Minor. The voice of Peter Jones takes us off into space and to the jokey science fiction saga that also holds a special place in the affections of the British public. Apparently, author Douglas Adams first had the basic idea for The Hitchhiker's Guide when he was himself hitchhiking in Spain. He looked up at the stars and wondered, what would it be like to hitchhike through them? Of course, to find out, he would first have had to leave the Earth, and no one but an astronaut would do that unless he had certain knowledge that the world as we know it was about to end. Ford, will you please tell me what the hell's going on? I think I'm beginning to lose my grip on the day. Drink up, you've got three pints to get to. Three pints at lunchtime? Time is an illusion. Lunchtime, doubly so. Very deep. You should send that into the Reader's Digest. They've got a page for people like you. Drink up. Why three pints? Muscle relaxants. You're going to need it. Did I do something wrong this morning, or has the world always been like this, and I've been too wrapped up in myself to notice? Uh, I'll try to explain. How long have we known each other, Arthur? Five years, maybe six. Most of it seemed to make some kind of sense at the time. All right. How would you react if I told you that I'm not from Guildford after all, but from a small planet somewhere in the vicinity of Beetlejuice? I don't know. Why? Do you think it's the sort of thing you're likely to say? Drink up. The world's about to end. This must be Thursday. I never could get the hang of Thursdays. Simon Jones as Arthur Dent and David Dixon as his friend from outer space, Ford Prefect. No relation to Ford Collin, by the way. Rob Buckman has heard two radio series of The Hitchhiker's Guide, one of which is currently being repeated on Wednesday lunchtimes, listen to the record, as well as reading the book and seeing it on stage. Does television add anything to all these? I'm delighted to say that the television really has added something. They have obviously thought about what your television does sitting in your living room, and now that everyone is familiar with teletext and so on, they've actually stretched the idea of a, the, the comedy series into the, the teletext era. And I think it is absolutely superb. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is this book, which is, as everyone, sh everyone knows, I'm sure by now, is the guide to the universe. And they've actually, while we've listened on the radio show to them sort of playing back bits of it and being bombarded with information about various galaxies and stellar formations and so on, now we can actually see it. And it's done absolutely splendidly. And it also demonstrates the thing that I most admire about Douglas Adams, which is his profligacy. I mean, unlike many writers, he has a thousand ideas and takes the best hundred and uses those best hundred maybe five seconds each, whereas other writers would have ten and, and use eleven for half an hour each, which is the main problem. And so often, as the book reads out some sort of bit of poetry or something like that, you, you cannot actually take everything in. You see a whole load of stuff, you know it's good stuff and it's very funny, and it's gone. He's just throwing it away. Does it bother you at all that you miss some of the jokes and some of the, the bits of poetry and so on that keep coming up on that book? It only bothers me because it just tells me how much of a good writer he is and how many ideas he has. Uh, but it, so actually, that kind of throwaway I just think is superb and adds to the, the pleasure of watching it. What about the two leading characters and the way they're performed on television? Well, I'm delighted to say they're everything I hoped they would be. Uh, admittedly, uh, David Dixon, as Ford Prefect, who's the alien that takes the, the hero, Arthur Dent, throughout the universe, uh, he is new, and I haven't seen him before, I haven't seen anything he's done, but I think he and uh, Simon Jones, as Arthur Dent, have captured that sort of air of understatement, which is exactly right, the sort of perplexity. And I think that the temptation to overact, to make it bolder and bigger, must have been very great. And I, I think they've well done everybody, the actors and uh, particularly the producer and director, for keeping it nice and tautly understated, which I think is very, very successful. What about the alien monsters? I mean, we're used to seeing Hollywood and uh, Elstree versions of them, very technical, very expensive. Uh, the BBC obviously didn't have that kind of money to spend on them. Do they come off? Yes, I think they do. There is not a great deal of rubber and latex around the place, but what there is is very high quality. The Vogon captains are made out of green rubber with a great big nose that goes all the way to the back of his neck. I think it's very, very nice indeed. And also, they were very wise in getting this, I don't know who he is, a six-foot-eight actor, he looks like, called Michael Kuehl, who plays the, the part of the Vogon guard. And they've actually done it very nicely because he, he's, they're sort of buried in the folds of his revolting green rubber overalls as they try and argue their way out of being thrown out of the airlock. Do you enjoy this sort of thing? What? What do you mean? I mean, does it give you a full satisfying life? Full satisfying life? Yeah. Stomping around, shouting, pushing people off spaceships. Well, the hours are good. 
They'd have to be. Claude, what are you doing? Shh. So, the hours are good, are they? Yeah, though now you come to mention it, most of the actual minutes are pretty lousy. Except some of those shouts I quite like. Resistance! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good at that. I can tell. But if the rest of it is so lousy, why do you do it? The, the girls? The rubber? The machismo? Oh, I don't know, really. I just sort of do it. See, my aunt said that Spaceship Guard was a good career for a young folk on, you know? The uniform, the low sun stun ray holster, the mindless tedium. Horn, this guy's half throttling me! The most central and vital alien character in the story is, I suppose, Zaphod Beeblebrox. Well, I think that's my only criticism of the whole show, actually. In the radio show, they had a very nice throwaway line about, oh, I like your second head and your third arm suits you, or something like that, which I think were very, very good throwaway lines on a radio show. I think that is one thing, one particular throwaway, that they should have thrown away and not picked up, because the second head, although done slightly better in the television than in uh, either of the theatre shows, is nevertheless hampering uh, Mark Wing Davy as they thought Beeblebrox, and I think it's, it's limiting his fairly sort of amazing open style of acting and, and cramping him, which is a, a great shame. It's horrifying, I think, to think what the British film industry might make of Hitchhiker's Guide, but then I was horrified to think of it on television. I must say, so was I. I. I was very, very worried that it wouldn't make it. There has been a lot of antipathy stirred up by the fact that it was so popular. There's a lot of people saying it can't be any good because it's so popular. But Douglas Adams really has put such enormous amounts of work into transferring it from radio onto television that I think he deserves every bit of success it's got. Rob Buckman, Kaleidoscope's special correspondent on The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Episode 3 can be seen on BBC Two next Monday at 9pm. Tomorrow night, Kaleidoscope reviews a new play by Peter Nichols at the Aldwych Theatre and a new book of short stories by Alan Silito. But it'll have its own intergalactic atmosphere, travelling some of the enormous distances covered by Gustav Mahler's monumental 3rd, 6th and 10th symphonies. Good night. <laughs>